Hi everyone, we're just gonna wait a minute or two more to let a few uh, last minute stragglers come in. So we'll start in a, in a jiffy. Lorraine, you're ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna begin. Welcome members, yeah. Welcome everyone and welcome members joining from around the country. This event is part of C by C Amplified, an idea summit presented by World Affairs Councils nationwide. This week, councils from around the US are working together to highlight the power of our network. We encourage everyone joining us today to support your local World Affairs Council. Aloha, my name is Nikki Shishido, Executive Director at the Pacific and Asian Affairs Council the World Affairs Council for the State of Hawaii. Thank you for joining us for this yoga break. I just want to take a moment to thank Waka, Bill and his team and WAC Connecticut for putting all this together. And a special shout out to Liz Brailsford from Waka for inviting me to host this session and be a part of C Amplified. We are grateful to have yoga teacher and visibility expert Lorraine Sanders of Spirit of 608 Media here with us from Charlottesville, Virginia to lead us through our yoga session today. Lorraine is a media strategist and podcast producer host who helps mission-driven ethical brands and female entrepreneurs increase visibility and connect with new audiences through creative content, PR and thought leadership. And she's a yoga teacher at Fly Dog Yoga in Charlottesville. A longtime journalist and yoga teacher, she combines media expertise and mindset techniques in her one-on-one -on -one work coaching founders and brands to increase visibility and reach new audiences. Together, they create media strategies and custom content that not only aligns with their unique brand values, but also captures the attention of major media outlets and new audiences. Lorraine, what amazing lines of work you're in. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. For members participating, there will be a chance to ask Lorraine questions at the end of the session, should you have any. You can type those into the chat box. Lorraine, I'll hand it over to you now. Thank you, Nikki. That was such a great intro. I didn't realize we were going to do that, so thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. It's, uh, I'm really excited to be here with you. I can't see exactly who's in the room, but um, I'm really excited, and uh, we're going to get started with the mid-afternoon yoga break and post breakdown. Um, my partner Will is going to be uh, the demo, uh, the demo guy today, so that I can show you alignment and offer some different variations on poses and different options. If you have any questions about your practice or specific poses, we'll have a few minutes at the end. Um, so if there's anything that you've been wondering, maybe how to modify or change something that uh, you need for your body so that it works for you, you can put a question in the chat. Um, it's a pop-up box that will appear on the side of your screen, um, and we'll uh, address those at the end. So to start out, um, I want to welcome you, and uh, I am a um, yoga instructor at uh, Fly Dog Yoga in Charlottesville. I am working on my 300 hour teacher training certification this year uh, with Eliza Whitman, who's the founder of the studio. And I have gained so much through this practice. Um, you know, it's a physical practice, but for me, it's more of a mental practice and it's helped me with everything I do in life. Um, so I'm excited to be able to bring some of that to you today. To start out, we will do uh, a brief meditation. Um, and the intention of the meditation here is not to go into like a zen-like state or um, 
<laughs> you know, achieve uh, eternal bliss. It's, you know, a lot of rumors about meditation and what it is. Today, the intention is to use this moment at the beginning of our time together to get here and to become aware of your mind, your body, and your breath. Um, as we build that awareness of uh, the mind, your body, and your breath, um, you're able to come back to the present moment in life, uh, both on and off the now, which is something that helps um, in so, so many ways, from reducing anxiety to building resilience, establishing calm confidence in life. Um, so find a comfortable seated position. You can sit cross-legged um, or up on your shins. You can sit in a chair or you have um, a blanket or a pillow. You can choose, um, choose anything that works for you. But get settled and soften her. Close your eyes. Take a minute to notice the quality of your breath. Is it short? Is it shallow? How, how are you feeling? Check in. Now bring all 10 fingers to touch, leaving some space in between the palms. Now lay them down in your lap or on the tops of your lips with your forearms resting and your fingers touching. Begin to breathe in through your nose and then out through your knees. Follow your breath, bring your awareness to the air as it comes in and goes back out. Feel the air around your body, the clothes on your chin. Bring your attention to the sounds, the distractions. Now bring your focus to your hands. Starting with the palms. As you breathe, take your attention from your thumb to your forefinger, middle finger, fourth finger, pinky finger. Now up to your forearms, upper arms, shoulders. Bringing your focus down your spine to your hips. Breathing, and if your mind wanders here, which it definitely will, just come back. Know that you can always breathe and come back. Use your body as an anchor. Send your thoughts and your attention to your legs on down to your feet. Moving from your littlest toe inward all the way to your big toe. Bring your focus back up your legs, your arms, your chest, your throat, your eyes your forehead, onto the crown of your head. Breathe. Take two more breaths here, coming back to your body. Release your hands. Keep your eyes soft. You can open. From your seated position, if you were on a block or a pillow, move it to the side and then come to your mat. You will walk through some of the most foundational poses at the beginning of a Baptist uh, power practice. And a lot of times people feel these poses are um, like really basic, but the amazing thing about them is that there's so much work to be found in each of these poses. 
by doing little things um, to adjust them. And so we'll walk through this so that whether you've been practicing since five minutes ago or 20 years, you'll be able to pull new things in and help build uh, your poses and posture so that you can expand it to new places. So starting with we'll come to pirate's pose. You're on your, your shins, your feet, the top of your feet are flat on the mat. Your hips sink back towards the heels. You can send your arm out along on the heels to in here. It's got all 10 fingers spread off, pressing into the mat. He's sinking his hips back. You can also have your arms by your side, but that feels better for you with your knees closer together. You pick the version of the pose that works best for you today. But continue to breathe. Notice your breath into your nose and out through your nose as you begin to settle into this pose. We start out with the bathroom power practice in child pose. It's a part of the sequence called integration. And it's really a time to notice your breath your body and the mat, and how they're all connected. What's going on in your mind, and what's going on in your breath, and what's going on with how your body feels, um, and how they're all integrated. So starting here, notice what happens if you change the work that you're doing. So try to use your hands to lift your elbows off the mat, reaching out forward, and you're finding work. Try on pulling your belly in toward your spine. Drop your feet down. This is a resting pose, but there's work to be found here if that's what you want today. Take one more breath here together. Now press back to downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, your heels are going towards the mat. They cannot reach the mat. But they're going towards the mat. You're pressing into your hands to send your chest back towards your thighs. Your tailbone is up. And notice if you are holding your neck in any uh, particular way. Your neck's not invited to uh, the party with this pose. Let it go, maybe turning it side to side. Starting out here, try bending one knee and then the other. Walking out your downward dog. You can take movement before you find stillness in the pose. Now, a couple of things you can do in downward facing dog if this pose is uncomfortable or um, difficult for you to hold. It's a home-based pose, and a lot of times people can either um, become very uncomfortable with it or they want to get out of it or um, just start to hang out. Let's talk about the hangout first. So, you know, like, you know the hangout where you like roll your shoulders, you're kind of like hunched over. You're just like, you know, like, if you see him on the screen, he's kind of ramping his shoulders outward. You want to pull your shoulder blades in toward the center of your back into your spine as you press your chest back towards your thighs. The downward facing dog is now an accessible pose for you. You can come to the tabletop variation with your knees down, but again here, you want to have your shoulders pulling in, belly and feet pressing into the mat. Do one more breath. And walk your feet to your hands. You bring your feet to the top of the mat, it's wrapped all pose. So you're hanging, hinging at the waist. You may want to take a really deep bend in your knees to bring your top half onto your thighs. That will also help remove tension from your hamstrings. Um, it will also help remove tension from your low back. So if you have any of these things going on in your body, you can adjust the pose so that you are uh, removing um, stress and tension in the places where uh, you need to do that. Now in this pose, your feet are hip width apart, and you're pressing down into all four corners of your feet. There are a lot of things that you can be doing with your arms. Neil has hands to opposite elbows. 
you can have your arms long. Maybe here where you are on your mat, I'll try on a couple of different places. I love to take mine behind my knees and release my neck. Another great way, if you have neck tension that you'd like to release, is to bring your hands interlace behind your head and gently work your head down. One more breath here. And then out. Moving on, if you have the binds, release your arms. Take a few side to side, maybe a figure eight with your fingers, or waking up the body, waking up the top. We're going to rise up to mountain pose, but think flat back. So you're coming up, hinging at the waist, arriving to stand at the top of your mat. Toes are touching. This pose is one of the most important poses in all of yoga, but it looks like you're just standing here. But there's so much going on. Your fingers are active and engaged. Your tailbone is toward the mat more than the back of the room. Think about pulling your inner ankles back and your outer fins in. So what you're doing, your, your ankles and your outer fins are not going to move at all, really, but you're pulling your leg muscles to the bones. You're putting everything in and you're beginning that work in the body, even in a pose that looks very still, almost like a resting pose. You're pressing down in your feet to lift the crown of your head up. It's something that many people refer to as root to rest. So you're rooting, rooting down to lift up and get more length. Now reach up, extend the mountain, and your exhale, fold. You're inhaling to the halfway lift. You pause here, flat back. Can you round over like this? Yeah. So like you're hunching in, again, pulling your shoulder blades in towards your spine. Your hands can be on your thighs, your shins, a block. There are a lot of choices here that you have. Tailbone straight back, crown the head to the front. Now fold. Come back up halfway. Let's try that one more time. Fold. Bring your hands to the mat. Step to high plank. And pause here. I know you all love to pause <laughs> and high plank. We'll try to be here for a couple of minutes, you know, at least. Um, so we're moving into the beginning of the practice, which typically starts with some spelling stations. So sun A's and sun B's. And the purpose here is to weaken up the body and begin to build heat internally, um, begin to flow. And one of the really kind of awesome things about the practice is that it brings you through flow, but then also out of flow. So you're pausing, right? And you really want to move, and you're learning that resilience and that ability in your body to stay put even when you want to go. Pausing in high plane. You can bring your knees down. You want to show the knees down. This can take a lot of work to build up to. So sure, bring your knees down. Moving to channel. Bend close, bringing them alongside the body, pulling through upward facing dog. Now, if you are watching this um, and you don't want to hold it, you can always bring your thighs down into more of a cobra pose with your arms. Uh, or with a slight bend and the top of your feet and the top of your thigh affecting into the mat. In upward facing dog, what we're looking for again is the shoulders into the spine, the crown of the head up, right? Not like you do the you know, look back, it's like that, right? Let's for one more. Press the upward facing dog. So we move through one. Uh, sun A after doing integration in the power practice. We're back at home base. And now we can begin to move more quickly with the heat that we're building through another sun A into a sun salutation B. Once we get through our first sun B, I will begin to just move us into a flow with less alignment um, uh, chatter. Um, so that you can enjoy this part of the practice. 
But no, as we move, they can always return to that Sadasana mountain pose that we talked about at the beginning. When you have those elements functioning in the pose, you will almost always be more likely to find correct uh, or uh, positive alignment for your body. Prepping that, come high up onto your toes, bend your knees, look to the front of the neck, and bring your feet to your hands your way. So walk, step, maybe you jump, halfway lift, now fold. On your inhale, rise up, reach, make your hands matter here, look up, and your exhale bow. Inhale, halfway lift, plant your hands, high plank, step back. And again, in high plank, stepping back, jumping back is is, is a lot of tension um, on your shoulders. So stepping back, now lower, chaturanga, pull through, upward facing dog, crown and head to the ceiling, press back, downward facing dog. Yeah. Take a breath here, come back to your breath. If you begin to hold your breath or not breathe at all, um, this is a chance to return to it. Moving on to a sun, Salvation B. Coming high on your toes, bend your knees low, look front of the mat to your feet, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, extend the mountain. Now sink your hips down, chair pose. Right? Okay. When you're in chair pose, there are a lot of different disciplines that position you um, and share those with different ways. Feel free to come up and out of this if you want and stand and sink back down. Many uh, uh, different versions of uh, different styles of yoga will have you leaning forward. In the bathroom practice um, and at the studio where I teach, we, uh, we teach chest up. So hand up, chest toward the front of your mat. Your tailbone is going more down. And you're pulling your um, belly in toward your spine. You're sinking your knees down and using your legs, pressing them towards each other to get more of So try that on for one minute. Now, let go forward fold. In the halfway, plant your hands, high plank to low plank, chaturanga, pulling through. Send it back to downward facing dog. Now that we're here, we're moving on to where you're one. One of the foundational poses of almost every yoga practice. So lift your right leg. Pause and feel the extension from your heel as you flex your foot. Your toes are toward the mat, all the way long spine to your hands. Hug your knee in to your nose. Pause in here. Pulling in with your core, stepping down to lift your back up. Now step your foot to your right hand, leaving your back foot on the mat, rise up where you want. The warrior one is a wonderful pose. It is a pose for strength. You know, you're a warrior, you're expanding, and you're finding something here that makes you feel strong and capable and powerful and resilient. You can do that by pressing your feet away from each other, rounding the outer edge of your back foot down to the mat. It will allow you to sink lower in your front leg and then stand up. Maybe spin your pinkies in towards center and stay for one more, noticing that if you want to back off of this and get out, could you breathe through it? Hands to the mat. High plank, lower chaturanga, pull through, down. On the left side, lift your leg, and again, pausing here, feeling that extension from your hand all the way back to the toes. Now hug in, knee to nose, rounding, step your left foot inside your left hand, press down. Get set up and rise up. So it's absolutely 
like wonderful to take the time that you need to find the foundation and the pose for yourself. So you're getting set up, you're getting your legs positioned, and then you're building on it, trusting your feet, you're pulling the shoulders in, you're reaching up. Maybe to even begin to take your gaze, what we call a drishti, up the wall. Take another breath here. Hands frame your front foot, high to low plane, flow through, meeting and downward facing dog. But at any point in your practice today or any time, you can always skip the vinyasa and go straight to downward facing dog, take a child's pose, come down to tabletop, add your variation so that the practice is truly bringing you what you need in the moment. My toes. Then get low, front of your mat, halfway, fold. Inhale, reach your arms up, chair pose, sink your hips down. Try lifting all 10 toes here. You can pick them up off the mat, feel that, spread the toes out, now place them into the mat. Bow. Inhale, half. High low, or if you're ready, flow back into Chalkin. Now press, downward facing dog. Go warrior one, right side again, beginning to flow here. Reach up. Now open warrior two. Two warrior poses. With warrior one, you're moving down to expand up. Warrior two, you're opening, you're expanding to the side. So your back foot may become more parallel to the back edge of your mat. I think maybe because for some people, keeping this leg angle helps um, with their hips. So try on different ways of doing this and then sink down. Reach out, hug your shoulders in. Your gaze is over your front hand, your front middle finger. Now flip your front palm up and reverse the warrior, sending your arm overhead, taking your gaze up to your top hands. One more breath, feeling the side body stretch, come forward to side angle. Your right arm is resting on top of your leg and you can stay here. Now you may begin to bring your right arm towards the mat or a block. You're pressing your feet away and you're pulling your lower ribs to the side and maybe towards the ceiling as you reach up and look up. Let's slow this out. Bring your hands down, high to the plate. Meeting down, facing dog, your vinyasa, your way. Other side. Warrior. Reach up, get set up, and Neil has his knee step right over his heel. He's able to straighten his back leg. Now we'll do warrior two. Again, hugging everything into the center line, keeping the shoulders like out of the neck. Now flip your front palm, reverse, side angle. Opening and reaching. Think about pulling your ribs, your front ribs, in toward the center of your body. So you're having a sensation when they're coming in while at the same time your shoulders are going back towards your spine. One ball, staying with it, now flow, high to low, chest on the pulling through, downward facing dog, crossing back. This time, warrior one, second rise, moving on, reach, open, flip, reverse, side angle, We've been here before, right? So you have been in this pose. 
build on it. Options. Again, beginning to extend your arm more towards the mat as you reach up. You may not move your arm at all. You might add on simply by adding more space between your ribs and your thigh. So you're pulling instead of dumping in. You might try a half bind. So bringing your top arm behind your back. Pulling into your leg with your left hand to twist more. See for one more here. On your back tail, going to triangle. So straighten your front leg. Now reach your top arm up. And use your bottom hand to anchor you in the pose. The triangle is when people, you know, I often want to get out of this pose. And I can like let me go and I can use my breath and always try to look at like, what is it that is making me want to just eject from this. And is there any way I can change something in the pose so that it works for me? With your top hand really strong, and then if you're pulling your body, come all the way up to stand. Keep your legs straight and turn. All ten toes toward the side of the middle. You can bring your hands to your hips, sending your elbows to the back. Think feet on the ball clap. So straight ahead, hinging at your waist, lead with your chest, forward fold. I can fold here. You can have your hands to a block. You may want to bring them all the way to the mat. We'll be here again on the other side. So you can choose something that works for you now and then come back to another option later. There is always the option to grab the outside of your feet, your ankles, and pull down. You might choose to interlace your fingers behind your back in a Venus block position and send your fists up. Wherever you are, Notice how your breath creates space in your body as you inhale. And when you exhale, you move into that space. Let your body go, your top half. Let your jaw go. Release your neck. Yeah. On your next inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Now rise all the way up to stand. Turn all ten toes toward the front of your mat, setting up for pyramid pose or front facing forward fold. So your legs are straight, and you may need to shorten your stance a lot. You may also want to widen your feet to hips width or even a little bit more apart. Your choice on your hands here. You can bring your hands to a block in front of you or to the mat, or take a Venus lap and releasing your fingers like Neil has. You fold, turning your chest towards your leg. A slight bend in your front leg can help you at the pose without the tension in your hamstring. Check in with your gaze. Is it towards the front of the mat, your front big toe, or maybe to the back? foot or back wall. It's your choice, but what you choose will make a difference in how the pose um, feels in your body today. Take one more breath here. If you have a bind, go ahead and let it go. And bring your left arm down, twisting triangle, and you can go right along to the ceiling. One thing that I have recently uh, learned and began doing that has made all the difference in the world for me with this pose is keeping your right arm, your top arm, at your hip. So you're here. And then expanding from there. It allows you to keep your hips in line and keeps you from the tendency to want to send your left hip like, way back on your right hip way forward for this pose. I find this to be one of the most difficult poses and um, keep coming back to it again and again to try to work into a new place with it. Release, rise all the way up. 
to stand, bring your feet to meet. Exhale, extended mountain, you're reaching. Now for a fold, and split your feet hips width distance apart. And go high stuff and you bring your peace fingers, your two, your two fingers to your big toes. Inhale to create some space, the flat back, then exhale, fold into the pose. Again, this is often the first time in a practice that you're bringing your entire body full circle. So you have um, your uh, hands attached to your feet and you're letting everything go. Um, bend the knees. It's a great option and variation here. Stay for one more. Release. Halfway lift. Plant your hands. High plank or chaturanga. Lower. Pull upward facing dog. Down. So pause in here. Maybe come down for a trail. So let's do that. Sink your knees down. Flatten your feet. Press your hips back. If at the beginning of um, this session you try uh, your knees wide and your hands out front, you might take a, a moment here to try these together, um, palms down, arms on either side. See which one you like more. I personally always like arms out front, but it's always uh, fun to try on new things and see where it lands for you. Okay. Can't have too much rest. <laughs> Shut that to downward facing dog. And here we go. Left side, step forward one. Pull well, down on your feet as you reach up. On your exhale, open for your two. See if you can think a little lower, turn on a little bit more work in your legs. Now flip your front palm, reverse it. Side angle. Away from each other, spinning the lower uh, left side through and under over to the side wall as you look up. Again, building up. Maybe you're extending your hands to the ground or bringing your top arm behind your back for a half bind. Triangle pose, straightening your front leg. You may want to bring, so you'll just grab and set foot up a little bit. You may want to shorten your stance. If this um, feels like a lot of work in either your lower half or your upper half, try to balance it out. Like, what can you do to lighten up a little bit in your legs? You may want to um, check in with whether or not you're locking out your front knee. Come out of that. And then reach to help build lightness into your upper body. Stay for one more, and then get strong in your top arm, pull up all the way. It feels good to come off of that, doesn't it? Send both toes, all ten toes, both feet uh, to the side of your mat, and fold. Bring your hands down. Now, here is the place in practice where people often uh, choose to go into an inversion and do a tripod headstand. Um, I'm not going to make you do that today, but that is something that you can build up to uh, in your practice. You can walk your hands back behind you with your fingers facing towards the back of the mat to help increase the fold. Take one more breath here. Right that up. Way. Then come all the way up to stand, turning all ten toes towards the front. Reach up and fold. Again, making neutral hips. So instead of one forward, one back, you're pulling them into an even line, pressing your feet together, thinking about um, your inner people spinning backwards. Two for one part. And then open and twisted triangle. So again, left arm to the ceiling. You're looking up to your top hand, but back off of your um, 
clicking into your neck. Protect your neck with this pose. And you can have more lightness in your upper body by returning to the shoulders, pull in toward the spine. One breath. Release. Bring your feet to me. Halfway. Fold. Switch your feet into the heart. So increasing um, the stretch, decreasing the distance, thrill toes. Come on to the palms of your hands, bringing your toes to the wrist crease. And fold. This is a pose that is often a checkout moment. It's easy to just hang. But you can also find your work here by pulling your elbows to the side wall, pressing down with your feet, maybe bringing a little bit more of your weight into the ball of your feet. Playing with that and how that changes the experience of balance in the pose. This is a really great place to check in with your jaw and let it go if you have to be clenching. Now release, right all the way up to stance. Let's shake it out. Yeah, you just shake it. Uh, move your legs, get settled. Let's do a couple of balance poses. Um, I know right now for time that it's been hard to find and connect with balance. Things can feel very out of control and hectic. And balance poses are a good place to experience what it's like to fall out and then get back in. So let's start out with a little on the side. You're going to bring your right foot over, right foot over your left. And you can stay with your right toes on the mat to the outside of your left foot as a kickstand. You may choose to bring your foot up. If you do flex, you may be able to access the double wrap, bringing your right foot behind your left leg. Your right arm goes under your left. You're bringing your elbows up towards your shoulders, in line with your shoulders, and you're, pull, you're pressing your elbows together, right? You're pulling everything in. Now let it go. Other side. Left leg over right. Left arm under. You're sinking your hips down. And this pose, it throws everything off. You can't even hold your drift because your arms are twisted up in front of your, of your face. And so there's a lot happening. See what happens when you intensify, like you hug your arms together, you pull your legs towards each other. It allows you to sink down and access more. Now release. Do standing big toe. You gonna kill me? <laughs> We're on like a squishy floor. It's really, really hard to balance. Uh, for standing big toe, right, you can bring your knee up, flex to your foot, and stay here. Hand on your foot for balance. If you would like, you can bring your piece fingers to your big toes, or maybe your hands to the outside of your foot and begin to extend. If you take the extension, Check in with your shoulder, pull it back to the socket. Right? You don't want to be hunching over like this, you want to be back. So you're in, take your leg out to the side, back to center, and let it go. All right. Other side. Right on down there, press your standing leg, your right foot into the mat, all four corners. And then pick your left leg. Flexing, again, using your right hand for balance. Picking one point to look at. Maybe expand and open to the side. If you really want to have fun here, you can take your dish over to the right and see if it throws you off balance. Now come back to center and let it go. Let's hold out the balance with tree pose. So three is one of my favorite, favorite poses. You can pick your foot position. Your toes can be down on the mat. I don't know if you can see me. You can keep your foot here. You can bring it here. Or you can come up higher. Your foot into your thigh. 
and press your thigh into your foot, hands to heart center. As you press your palms together, you can find more stability in the pose. And when you're ready, you can either stay here or begin to grow by reaching up, maybe interlacing your hands and sending your palms toward the ceiling. Are you closing your eyes? It's weird, right? Release the other side. Again, pick the position with your feet. It may be totally different on this side of your body. Then find your stability, find a place where you're solid. And from that point, begin to grow and expand into a different place. And if you're wobbling on your foot, follow your breath and lock your gaze on one position. Breathe. You fall out, just get back. Stay for one more. And let it go. All right, feet to knee, front of the mat. Extend the knock and reach up, look up, maybe turning it into a back bend, but so looking towards the ceiling and exhale out. Inhale halfway, hands plant on the chaturanga, high low plank, vinyasa through, meeting downward facing dog. We'll go pigeon on the right foot. Super pigeon, you want to bring. Your right knee behind your right wrist. Setting down and setting this up. This pose lands differently in people's bodies. Um, if your hip, so your right hip, is uh, awesome, this is a great time to grab whatever you have near you a block, a pillow, roll of a blanket, and stick it under there so that you have the ability to keep your hips in line. If you are um, like Benny Flexi, as we say, and you go all the way down, think about pulling your left hip forward, right hip back. Now fold chest towards the mat. Again, you may go all the way down to where your hands are extended out in front of you, palms facing down, and this is a very active version of the pose. You may come to your forearms or have your forehead or chest on a clock. Sending your back toes straight towards the back of the mat. Let something go. See if you can get heavier. Feel the mat under with you. Feel the foundation support because there. One more up here. If you're down on your forearms, your hands are outstretched, come back to your palms. You can front up, go for downward facing dog, or if you want, just swing your left uh, leg around and then transition to pigeon and on the other side. So on this side, your left knee will be behind your left wrist. Get there any way you want. Get set up, fold down. This pose brings up a lot of things for people. There's um, a lot of sensation that comes with this particular pose. When that happens for you, you can notice it and then come back to your breath, to your body. Trying not to let what comes up become your story or what's real. Just coming back to this moment. Stay for one more breath and out. Turn your right leg around and come to a seat. We'll do a seated dream. So let's send your left leg long, right foot comes into your thigh, opening your um, your hips down, reach up, hands at the waist, leave with your chest and hold. Your hands can come to rest on your legs, they may grab your foot. If you have a strap, this is a great place to wrap it, even a towel or a t shirt. 
breathe. Come back back to center and switch to the other side. Hold. Think about flexing both feet. Release, come back to center, send both legs out long, feet are flexed. Take a minute to bring your hands to your hips and press them down on your hands, your, your hips, your palms pressing down to the mat. Pulling your shoulders back, crown up. Now reach up, fold right down the middle. Again, noticing that there's work even in these four poses. You can flex your feet to really fire up and activate your legs. You can send your toes back towards your nose. You can grab on. Release, roll all the way down to your back. Soup the body can also not bring the soles of the feet together, center knees out wide, you know, the diamond shape between your heels and your head. Bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. The purpose of that um, is allowing you to connect with your breath. We're moving towards the end of the practice. Send your feet out in front of you. We'll move to shoulder stance. Flex your feet. Now, if you do not want to lift your feet over your head, you can simply send, you can bend your knees. And take your feet to the outside of the mat, your knees in, and press your um, low back into the knee. For shoulder stand, you are lifting your flat feet up from the ceiling, you're pulling your toes back towards your nose. You might do supported shoulder stands here with a block under your low back. You might simply put your legs up the wall. Press down on your shoulders, use your core, your side body to lift your heels higher. Now either come down to your back or send your feet back for a while. You don't have some space for a plow. <laughs> if you're in the plow, roll all the way down to your back. Hug your right knee in, keep your left leg long, and twist. Bending your knee over, pressing both shoulders down. Center, hug your other knee in, switch to the other side. Yeah, and giving yourself an assist with your hands, bringing your knee more into the twist. Feels really good here. Take a long breath. Come back to center, hug your knees in, we roll side to side a little bit. Bring everything in and take a deep breath, hold it and let everything go. We go at Shavasana. Take one minute here to rest. You've done the work. Now rest. Notice your thoughts. Let them go. Begin to bring some movement back into your hands. 
Coming into your feet, you're pointing and flexing your feet, opening and closing your fists. If you can, you have the space, send your arms out long overhead, full body stretch. Making your way to one side, pausing. Coming out of the rest, up to a comfortable seated position, keeping your eyes softened or closed. Reach your hands up. Grab all the good stuff that's out there for you. Pull them into heart center. Thank you for practicing with me today. And thank you for coming and doing this for yourself. Take a deep breath in. Together, say, not sit. All right. So glad that we got to do that. Thank you, Neil. Well, thank you. And thank you to Liz for getting me involved in this. Um, and I think Nikki, if we have any questions, we do have a few more minutes. Um, happy to touch on anything um, that you would like to, to know. Thank you so much, Lorraine. That was awesome. And Neil, thank you too. Uh, we did have a question that came in from Nassim. So Lorraine, okay. He's asking, um, what do you recommend for people with back prob problems and arthritis in knees? Is, okay. yoga, is it even the right regimen for people with those type of issues? Yeah, so great question. I, I will tell you ask because I actually came to yoga, um, I mean, I practiced off and on for a long time, but I didn't really actually do it in earnest and fall in love with it until I had a back injury that, um, I mean, my doctors told me that I wasn't going to be able to touch my toes, um, and I had surgery for it. And so I am a, a, a better shape than I ever was before. So I'm a huge believer in the ability to um, modify and vary anything you do in yoga and build onto it um, and make it work for any body. You know, um, in terms of what you can actually do. Um, I would suggest being very uh, aware of how the bend in your knees affects different poses. So again, on those forward folds, um, it can put a lot of strain into your back. You may want to bend your knees and take the tension on. Um, also, when you are working in poses like the warrior poses and you feel uh, tension in your knees, you should always feel comfortable bringing a knee down and just staying like this. It's completely acceptable to do that. And in fact, um, there are some poses, uh, for example, we didn't do this today, but flexible lunge, which has your, um, your, your heel stacked over the ball of your foot. When you bring a knee down here, um, you're actually able to access a different part of your leg. Um, and so a lot of times people feel that bringing a knee down or modifying to where you're bending looks like you're not doing <laughs> the pose right. But in fact, it can actually bring you a lot of um, different work, even if you didn't have any, um, you know, tension in your body that you're trying to set to work around. So I would recommend experimenting with with things like that. Um, also, uh, that's recommendation without being able to be in the same room and go through the poses with you is to um, get a block. And I almost always, so for example, um, triangle. Um, that front facing forward fold, I will position a block and it will allow you to get more height, um, more distance from the mat. And that actually allows me to have the proper alignment um, and, you know, take the tension out of the places that I don't want to have it. So I that helps. Great. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, yeah, I didn't see any other questions here, so I think we're going to wrap it up. You did a great job, perfect timing. Um, you know, and thank you everyone for attending C by C Amplified. We wish you all a safe and wonderful Tuesday. Remember to support your local World Affairs Council and for more information, check out cxcamplified.com. Thank you everyone. Aloha. Thanks Lorraine, thanks Neil.
Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. That was hey, Nikki, thank you so much for doing that. That was great. I needed this mid afternoon break. Seriously, it breaks up tension, it breaks up stress. It's a good workout. It was my off day for yoga, so it was perfect.